show you the inside of the D25 in case you need to do an upgrade to the D25. And to do that, you have to remove this uh, main card. Now, to remove it, there is uh, one, two, three, four, five screws. And also there is guides. And these guides are basically to make sure that when the card is installed, so this guide over here, right, is to make sure that when the card is installed back, that it's installed in the right position, right? So what we're going to do next is we're going to remove these screws. Uh, what you need to do is you need to loosen it a little, right? Don't, don't uh, uh, press it too much. And then with your hand, just... Um, basically lo loosen the screws. What you don't want is to keep putting um, the screwdriver on it, otherwise that, that the thread will be uh, lost. So once we have loosened all uh, five um, screws, as, as I said, with your hand, uh, you would take, you would pull out this card. It takes a little bit of pressure, but then it comes out. And you wanna, you wanna basically free the top of it and then slide it out. If you try to take it, from the bottom, right, it will be a fight. You'll never be able to take it out. So the easiest thing to do is to free up the top and then take it out just like that. Okay, so we, what we want to do is we want to remove the top uh, card that has the power supply, like we said, it has the, the basically the communication card, it has the expansion card, in case you need to replace the expansion card on it. Now to do that, there's a latching clip in here and on the other side and the first step is to basically push it up right so other if it's inside then you can't remove this card this card will be secured in right so to, to remove that card the first thing to do is to latch up the first the this side so push out the clip upside and then push up the clip on the other side okay so after uh, basically taking out the latching clips that uh, keep the the card inside. We're just gonna remove this top card. Okay, I'm just gonna talk about it, right? So we've seen it from the back. We've seen the power supply. As you can see, this power supply can connect in there. And uh, like I said, this power supply comes in many uh, flavors. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna mention it quickly. So the available power inputs is 70 to 120 to 250 volts DC or 120 volt AC. The second option is 250 volt DC or 240 volt AC. And uh, it can also work at 20 to 60 volt DC from an input uh, power. So uh, basically these are the, the three options, 70 to 150 volt DC or 120 volt AC, 250 volt DC or 240 volt AC. The third option is 20 to 60 volt DC. So that's the power supply. It comes in three different options. This card, like we said, I mean, you've seen it from the back, right, with the maintenance, the UTC, the IED1, the IED2, or COM3, COM4, right? This is basically the card that maintains and uh, service these communication uh, ports. The expansion card in here, right, uh, which we have talked about, so it has so many options. The first option is, of course, a 10 base T, uh, which comes with the I2, uh, network cards that can be either FL or basically uh, fiber or uh, copper connection, right? The other option that it comes in is it can come with two serial ports. And when you put it with two serial ports, uh, basically what we can do is we can use uh, a radio or uh, an external power to feed into these ports. The reason you would want to feed power into these uh, ports is, let's say the ports are feeding into a modem that requires power through the serial port, through the 9-pin serial port, then you would feed power from the connector and that would feed out into the two serial ports. So like I said, this is option number one, which is a copper network. It can be fiber network or it can be two serial ports that can, you can feed power or just use it without 
uh, power in there. 